When it comes to learning English, especially when it comes to input of English, listening to things and then trying to figure out what people are saying based on input, we have a lot of resources out there. We have movies, we have videos, we have YouTube videos, uh, either just about anything, watching any television show or series or watching any movie, or you can watch videos like this, videos focused on the English language. And in a lot of these types of videos that we have about the English language, we focus on things like people speaking quickly or connected speech, or maybe phrasal verbs, maybe idioms, something like that. But today I wanna to focus on something a little bit different. I wanna focus on stupid people. Now, no, I don't want you to be a stupid speaker of English unless, you know, that's your goal and, you know, different strokes for different folks. But today I want to focus on stupid people because they're everywhere. I'm sorry, in your country and my country, we are filled with stupid people. And you know that, you know, when somebody's dumb or not, you know, if somebody is dumb as a box of rocks, you can tell if people are just a few fries short of a happy meal. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So why do I want to focus on stupid people? Well, when you come to the United States, you are going to interact with people who have horrible vocabulary, horrible grammar, horrible pronunciation. They're not clear at all, but yet you might need to know how to interact with them or listen to them and figure out what they're saying because, well, something might rely on it. You might be getting something fixed or getting some service and the person that you're talking to just makes absolutely no sense and you need to know it. And that's what we're going to focus on today. Now, the video we're going to be using today is from the 1981 film Vernon, Florida, directed by Errol Morris. So Errol Morris has done a number of movies, has won awards and stuff like this. But this is one of the first movies that he did. And in this movie, he actually goes to Vernon, Florida, which is in the panhandle of Florida. And he actually went there because there was an insurance fraud scheme going on down there. But instead of doing that, he just found the people to be quite interesting. So he just started doing videos about the people in the city and just started filming them and interviewing them about anything. And that just made the video off of that interaction he had with people. Now, in today's video, we are going to be looking at one specific video that I understand about 99% of the words that are said in the video and about 95% percent of what the person in this video is trying to convey what they're trying to explain but for a lot of non-native speakers it might be very very hard for them to understand what this person is saying but it's important for you to improve your listening skills because at the end of the day when you're learning English not everyone is going to be speaking clearly not everybody is going to be using correct grammar there are going to be situations where the use of the language is absolutely diverse and there is a large variety in the way people speak and you might encounter somebody like this and if that's the case you want to have the skills and the know-how to try to figure out what a person is saying so we're not necessarily using this guy because he's dumb which i'm sorry he's dumb but we're doing it so that you can improve your listening skills and you can deduce what somebody is saying from both the context and the language that they are using. Now, before we start the video, there's a few things I want you to do. The first thing is I want you to get some paper and a pen or a pencil because I want you to write down words that you notice, words that you understand while this person is speaking, because this is going to be very important for you to kind of comprehend what the person is saying based on a number of words and other clues that we have in this video. So the second thing I want you to pay attention to are the nonverbal movements that he does. So throughout this video, he is going to be doing a lot of nonverbal hand gestures and leg gestures and all that that actually give you more of a clue of what he's talking about. And I wanna focus on looking at these nonverbal gestures to then understand the context further. And finally, at the end, when this video is done, I just want you to try to figure out what you think he was talking about. What, what was he saying? What was the message he was trying to convey? So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna play the entire video. And when we play the entire video, 
I want you to listen. I want you to write things down. I want to see if you notice certain things and whatnot. But I am not going to have subtitles for this part. I don't want you to cheat. We are not going to do subtitles. So you can't press the little CC closed caption option and see subtitles. They will not be there. And if you try to auto generate subtitles, it might come out really, really bad. All right, so with that being the case, let's go ahead and play the film. You ever seen a man's brains? Oh, I've seen them. I take them up, scoop them up, put them in, do, a re do them up like brains. You're buying brains. But there's a bowl right here, and there's a bowl here, a bowl here, and a bowl there. Now, they're connected to the spine. The spine goes down the backbone. And uh, if all four of these uh, bowls of brains, if all four of them is functioning, you can, you're not a one-track mind. You're a four-track mind. And you can, you can, I see a lot of folks, they can type one letter, uh, write me a letter and you a letter on the type machine and writing on one way with this hand and writing your letter with this hand and my letter with that. And I can take pencil and sit down and write with this hand and oh, that one. Uh, but same time. Two pencils. I've done that a lot of times. And these burns, now what what I was what I was telling you was I can't stand up just uh, I don't believe without propping against something. It gets me out of balance. I had to get something, get something. And you run one now now if you ain't got that and and I've offered all over this town time and again twenty dollars to anybody do it. You run that foot in the circle this way and then you hand right to the reverse. Then they just pick up your pistol and go and shoot the week in the eye singing a song. That's four. In other words, there's five things. That's five things I can do on this. On one with this old knot up here. All right, so now that you've watched it, how difficult was that for you? Could you get an idea of what he was talking about? Well, Let's go ahead and break this video down so you can get a little bit more of an idea. So let's look at the first part of the video. Here we go. You ever seen a man's brains? Oh, I've seen them. I take them up, scoop them up, put them in, do, a re do them up like brains. You're buying brains. So you notice in this little introductory part, he says, you know, have you ever seen a man's brains? And he says, I've seen a man's brains. I've picked them up, scooped them up. So to scoop can be taking a shovel and getting a scoop of something like a scoop of ice cream. We can use that. But he uses the nonverbal gesture to say to scoop them up and to scoop them up because we use um a lot of times for them. Pick them up, scoop them up. So here is a nonverbal gesture along with some English, it might be a little bit harder to understand, but by looking at the nonverbal gesture, you can maybe get more of an idea of what he's saying. But he says, he's, he's seen a man's brains. He says that he's scooped them up, he's picked them up, he's put them together, which I don't know uh, what that means. And then he talks about buying brains. Now this, I think, goes to that insurance scam thing I was telling you about earlier. But let's continue listening to this video. But there's a bowl right here, and there's a bowl here, a bowl here, and a bowl there. Now, they're connected to the spine. The spine goes down the backbone. Now, in this situation, he says there's a bowl here, like a, like a bowl, like what we eat out of, a bowl. That there is a bowl here, a bowl here, a bowl here, and a bowl here. And these bowls are connected to the spine, which goes down to backbone. Now, the spine and the backbone are the exact same thing. He probably means the spinal cord and that it goes down the spine or the backbone. We can call it both. So uh, backbone is way more informal. Spine is like the literal term that we use when we are talking about medical um, 
physiology. We're talking about the anatomy of a person. Let's go ahead and continue with this. And uh, if all four of these uh, bowls of brain, if all four of them is functioning, you can, you're not a one-track mind. You're a four-track mind. So he says, if all four of these bowls of brains is functioning, now you probably already know that's incorrect. You should say, if all four of these bowls of brains are functioning. So that's a grammatical error. So in this case, he says, you're not a one-track mind, you're a four-track mind. Now being a one-track mind means that you only focus on one thing. And usually this is met in a negative way, though sometimes it can be used in a positive way. If you're saying somebody's really one tracked minded on a specific project that they don't have any other distractions. So it can be used in a positive way, but it's usually used in a negative way. So what he's saying is you're not a one track mind because these four bowls of brains are functioning at the same time that you can do four things basically, or you're a four track mind. You can do four things at the same time. Let's keep on going. And you can, you can, I see a lot of folks, they can type one letter, uh, write me a letter and you a letter on the type machine and write on one way with this hand, and write in your letter with this hand and my letter with that. And I could take pencil and sit down and write with this hand and oh, that one. At the same time, two pens. I've done that a lot of times. Now, this one is kind of hard. I know what he's saying, but like his brain can't, he's definitely not a four track mind. His brain can't comprehend what he's saying, but essentially he's saying, I've seen people or you've seen people who can do like type with one hand and then when they're, once they're done typing with this hand, they can write with this hand or type with this hand. So the whole idea that he's saying here is he says that a person writes with this one and types with this one, or he like says you can type with this one and type with this one or write with this one and then write with this one. So he's talking about writing separately, that you do this hand, your left hand first, then maybe you do your right hand next or vice versa. That's what he's trying to get across here, though the way he explains it is very discombobulated because he can't even get it together in his head. So in this part, he's saying he can take a pencil and with one hand, he can write cat shit, the word cat shit with this hand and dog shit with this hand at the same time. So he's saying, that unlike before where somebody uses one hand here and then they use one hand here, that he can write dog shit and cat shit at the same time um, with two pencils. That's what he says in this part. So this shows, according to him, that he's using most of his brain because he's able to do two things at once instead of only one thing with one hand and one thing with another. Let's continue. And the brain, that what what I was what I was telling you was I can't stand up just uh I don't believe without propping against something. It gets me out of balance. I had to get something, get something. So he starts off saying, and these brains, you know, what I was telling you is and then his mind goes in a different direction, he says, but I can't stand up without propping myself against something. So to prop yourself means to use something for support to keep something up. So you can prop yourself against something so that you don't fall down or whatever. So here you can see with the nonverbal communication, he's going to the door to prop himself up. And he says he needs to prop himself up against something. Otherwise it will keep him out of balance. Now he doesn't say the word otherwise, but he says, I need to prop myself up against something. Otherwise I'll be kept out of balance. Now that's how we might say it, but he, kind of is his, his own direction and says it in a, in a not so clear way. All right, let's continue. And you run one, now, now if you ain't got that, and, and I've offered all over this town, time and again, $20, anybody do it. 
So he says, and if you ain't got that, and I've offered people time and again around this town, $20. So what he starts talking about is he's talking about people with their four track mind or whatever, like writing dog shit and cat shit at the same time. He's saying that he's asked people around this town to a, to be able to show that they have the ability to do multiple things at once and that he's offered them $20 to show that they could do this. And this is why he's saying, you know, I've gone all around this town um, and offered $20. So this means he's offered $20 to people who could show that they have this ability to do this. Now, let's continue. He run that photo in a circle, and then you hand right to the reverse. Then they just pick up your pistol and go to shoot the wish in your eyes, singing a song. That's four. In other words, it's five things. That's five things I can do on this. On one with this old knot up here. So he says, if you run your foot in a circle this way, and you run your hand going this way, and if you open the drawer and pick up the pistol and you start shooting into the yard and singing a song. And he says as he walks away, that's four things, and then he changes it. That's five things that I can do with that knot up here. Okay, so he just calls it, for slang, he just calls his brain his knot. You, you know, you can call it many, many things, but he says his knot up here. But you might not need to know the word that he calls it knot. I mean, I wouldn't call it knot. A lot of people wouldn't call it knot. But the fact that he's been talking about brains and then he says this, and he, and he points here, it's, again, the nonverbal communication that you can understand that he's talking about his brain in this situation. And that's the whole entire video. Now, again, I told you it's pretty stupid, and it is pretty stupid. And the guy, again, is a, he's a few fries short of a Happy Meal, no doubt about that. But I wanted you to watch this video because it's not necessarily about the stupid English. It's about looking at someone who is speaking English that I understand... Again, like I said, 95% of what this person says, I understand what they're saying and a lot of people won't understand what they're saying, but it's not just purely the words and the grammar that'll help you know what they're saying. It's also understanding the context of the story, listening to the words, which then maybe builds a context and looking at the nonverbal communication, such as picking up something and shooting, doing this with the hand, talking about his brain, um, using the word scoop up or prop against something. He used a lot of nonverbal communication connected to the words that he was actually using. And you can use these as hints to help you learn and understand English. So if you are in a situation where it's really difficult for you to comprehend what somebody is saying, look around, take the words that you know, try to understand the context, and especially look at that nonverbal communication to see if it gives you any hints as to what the person might be saying. I hope that that helped you kind of look at English in a different way instead of the absolute polished way that a lot of us speak English on a daily basis, especially when you're learning English as a learner, because the way I speak to you is not the same way I speak to other people. And the way this guy speaks is very, very local. But if you can start comprehending and understanding what this is all about, then you can start understanding and comprehending more and more of the English language. And when you are in those situations that are very hard to understand, well, that will help you more. All right, well, that's all for today. Thank you very much. I'll see you later on and make sure you subscribe if you've lasted this long and press a little bell and, and all that jazz, all right? See you later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.